Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celeb news. Now today we have. Hey yo, man, we got Snoop letting you know how much you're gonna make if you decide you wanna go into the rap game. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna talk about that, man. Uh we also got um uh we got look, look, we got Kanye West and Ta- and Taylor Swift, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean she lists she lists uh, Taylor's going in on Kanye, I guess. Yeah, you know I mean, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we also got uh, Russell Simmons and, and and some assault claims, man. Yeah, yeah, they coming out the woodworks at this point, man. We got um a little bit of R. Kelly information, man. We are gonna talk about that finesse two times getting his brother jump and uh, allegedly and Young Thug lawyer explaining the lyrics again. Thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source Show. This first time to the channel, man. Be sure to hit that like button if you feel any part of the content. We definitely appreciate that. That notification bell's waiting for your tap. So going to give it a tap and that subscribe button is waiting for your subscribe. Christian man's going to say that you shit the sound, man. Young Thug's lawyer has been in the courtroom explaining Thug's lyrics, man. And the joint is wild. You see what I'm saying? Him trying to explain those lyrics to me is absolutely ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? There's no way he's like, he is not in league with the prosecutor. You see what I'm saying? Take a listen to how the lawyer, uh, Young Thug's uh, defense describes Thug's violent lyrics. Take a listen real quick. Hey, how you doing? I'm that guy. I got bodies on bodies. Okay. He's rapping about sleeping with a bunch of women at the same time. Or maybe not. Maybe that's not it. Maybe he's rapping about and he's laying people out on the field. Bodies on bodies. He's fuck the police, fuck them in a high speed. It is a call out, Your Honor, to NWA with their famous song, Fuck the Police. It is social commentary. I let my life for real for slime get killed. Now I know I have said I killed it. I pray that when I walk out of here today, someone says, Doug, how'd you do today? I'm like, I killed it. I kill refers to doing a great job when you're rapping in the studio. I kill for the label. Running from 12 and I jump through the fences. Is it running around his neighborhood at the age of 12? He had a friend named 12 when he was younger. Is it running with his friend named 12? So let me get this straight. His best angle, right? As a lawyer, was to say the lyrics are true but merely misunderstood. You know what I'm saying? Are you kidding me, man? Look, you as a lawyer didn't take the merely art angle. You know what I mean? You didn't explain how hip hop could be metaphors and similes used to add depth and vivid imagery to hip hop lyrics. Look, like how being as artistic as possible in the delivery on the hip uh, of hip hop allows artists to convey complex ideas in a more relatable and engaging manner. How did you not? How did you not? Like, how did you skip over that? You ain't think to come from that angle. You as a lawyer didn't think to say narratives and storytelling within Thugger's lyrics provide a platform for him as an artist to express experiences from people within the community's angle the societal issues using imaginative tales and how that contributes to the artistry of the genre you couldn't think of that look i just proposed that to you now on youtube a rando on youtube just proposed that to you oh his his lyrics uh, uh, and his music are merely a social critique you know what I'm saying? Much like The Godfather may have been, like New Jack City may have, like The Sopranos and Oz may have been, like Grand Theft Auto may have been. Look, they pay me like 75, 80K a year. You see what I'm saying? I'm I'm not, look, I'm not quite sure on the number, but I'm just a regular dude. I, I think I could have spun that. Real talk, you know what I'm saying? Because his music illustrates raw emotions and, and shares people in the community's personal struggles and triumphs. You know what I'm saying? Creating connection with his with his listeners and enhancing the authenticity of his art. So much so that even you believe him. You know what I'm saying? L- lawyer guy. You couldn't do that. I just did that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look, or do I know nothing and I made it way too simple? Look, maybe I made it way too simple. Maybe Judge Should Knight would have stopped me dead in my tracks like counsel, approach the bench. I'm like, Yana, I'm not, I'm not finished. I was on a roll. Judge would have been like, relevance, please. Uh, 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 relevance, are you kidding me? Shook. His music is art. Let's focus on the relevant legal issues, celeb. Yana, I am. I don't see the relevance to the case at hand. Please, please refrain from speculating, celeb. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, Yana, you mean. Look, look, look. Then he'd be like, approach the bench. You're buying lunch for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Remember when he m- made the, the lawyer buy lunch for everybody? Look, look, never mind all that. Listen, uh, Finesse Two Times' brother has stated, right, that he got jumped by his own.
man. Listen, man. I'm gonna make this shit straight and simple, man. You know? So we out here in Miami, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get straight to it, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Me and bruh had some words, you know what I'm saying? Some disagreements, you know what I'm saying? I'll let that be known later. And I'm gonna upload the footage of what just happened. As you can see, I got a knot on my head, you hear me? I sure did jump, bro. My, my own motherfucking brother, bro. My own motherfucking brother, bro, you hear me? And the reason behind this shit, I ain't gonna even say it on live right here. I'ma just let y'all know what happened, cuz. I got, come on, cuz. Man, that man let his own nigga jump me, cuz. What nigga you know let his own nigga jump him, bro? Come on, man, that shit ain't straightful. Ain't no more F and G with me. Man, don't, 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 don't say nothing to me about no finesse two time. No, none of that shit, bro. I'm standing on it this time, bro. Real talk, bro. I tried to come back and show my love, show my loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. Just because I don't want to leave, bro. You tell these niggas put their hands on me, bro. Like I'm a bitch. Then he tell one of his niggas. I got all this shit on footage, bro. He tell one of his niggas, hey, cut. Go on, fight him, cut. Get what, I, get what cut say. I don't want the one-on-one -on -one with him, bro. And them niggas jump me, bro. I ain't run me up, fool. And I'm going to tell you why. Sugar finna expose her. The cut nigga, expose him. So whatever you wanna do, nigga, you tell me you got paper, this, that, and the other, nigga, drop it, nigga. On mama, nigga, on my grandma, nigga. Get me out of here, nigga. Come finna be your worst nightmare. On my mama, you playing fool. What type of nigga let his nigga jump his blood brother? You don't get no more respect out here for that, fool. No more. Run me up, fool. Any my phone down, any my phone down, I'm putting it on the charge. I'm going live again, fool. It ain't shit to me to be out here in these streets by myself. Sure, this whole cut, look at this knot on my head. Cause I ain't cut nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? I ain't cut nowhere else. Fool, them niggas tell me I leave, leave, leave. Boy, it's finna be this or that. I ain't take her your business then, bitch ass nigga. Come on, man, nigga kind of grabbing on me. Man, get up on me, man. Them niggas try to taunt me, cuz. Come on, man. And I got the footage, cuz. Come on, man. Run me up, bro. Oh, man, you been out here doing, you been doing time. I been in these streets. I ain't never been scared of no nigga. I can walk outside without no, man, come on, man. Man, what type of nigga you know let his niggas fight his own brother? Then I'm telling the nigga, get my one-on-one -on -one out here, man. My nigga wanna even fight me one-on-one, -on -one, man. All you nigga, big Jew, little Jew, cold, uh, cut. All you niggas some bitches, bro. Talk, boy, I stamped that, fool. What type of nigga move in an Airbnb and move strangers in his hole? Give a stranger a bed, fool, and tell your little brother you gotta sleep on the floor. And you a bitch, fool. Got me fucked up, fool. Come on, man. Come on, cuz. I ain't, I ain't no F and G, bro. I ain't no F and G with me, bro. Real talk, bro. Nigga trying to be hard on they blood, brother. But when these nigga try your weak ass, now you want to come calling me. Don't call me no more, bro. Real talk, bro. I been out here in these streets, bro. I been out here slack doing all that by myself, bro. I ain't never needed no nigga, bro. Trying to treat me like I'm a sucker, fool. Come on, cuz. What type of nigga let some nigga jump his blood brother, cuz? Man, that shit ain't straight, fool. Come on, man. This shit ain't nothing, fool. And I wanted my one, fool. Wait till I upload my video, fool. Wait till I upload this video, fool. Your own brother, fool. Man, tell him to get away from her. Man, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere, fool. Get my shit you owe me, fool. Yeah, fool, then where we going? Since it fucked me. Since it fucked me, then where we going, fool? Uh, I got, I got, I got two questions. One, how the hell he got the footage? B, how the hell you cross your own brother, man? 
You know, that got the same face. <laughs> and and while we at it, uh, three. That's your little brother, as far as I understand. Like, that's insane. If your older brother don't protect you and over a disagreement, <laughs> look, you, you told them dudes to do that? Look, like, that's dead wrong. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Look, maybe little bro hands are lethal. Perhaps that's what it is. But still, you know what I mean? He said, he said, and I'm going to tell you why. He goes, sugar, we're going to expose her. The cut ninja, we finna expose him. Close quote. So it sounded like someone named Sugar is involved, which I could only imagine an argument. Um, I, I could only imagine how that played out. You know what I'm saying? And he told him to leave and he ain't want to leave. Then he said he was jumped. Like, you could see the pain was more in the betrayal than in the knot on his forehead. You follow what I'm saying, man? Like then the whole stranger on the bed and the brother on the floor thing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And 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 the brother is your standing? <laughs> no. Now finesse two times uh, said only one person actually hit him. Take a listen to what finesse said. I pay both of y'all six to eight hundred dollars a week, bro. That's twelve hundred, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a week, bro. Go get y'all a room if y'all want to lay up and. If you want to lay up and f that back to get with, you have plenty of spaces to go make you a big burn mansion zone. That's what we do on the road. We rappers. We been thugging. I just find you $2,000 for bringing somebody to my house that I ain't know. I try to remove them without any physical force, bro. I got a knot on my head. My one nigga hit you, fool. I don't know, but you know how it go, man. You know how sometimes... A group of niggas can approach you and one nigga hit your ass and if you look up and you think everybody jumped you, that's probably what his ass had. That's probably what his ass had, bro. On God, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is a, to me, this is a sad situation, man, because... You know what I mean? Like, if that's your brother and you grew up with him and y'all said, like, come on, man. Like, it's one thing if you hit your brother, but to command someone else to hit your brother? You know what I mean? I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's got to be painful. You know what I'm saying? That's got to be super painful. Anyway, um, for the first time in about 20 years, R. Kelly made a statement that I found that I 100% believe him. 100% uh, uh, concerning these women allegations. All this other Take a listen to the part that you probably never realized played of the Gale interview part um, where R. Kelly told what I believe to be the truth. Take a listen. He sent me something on my phone and it said that I hog-tied her. I don't know how to hog that people. What would I hog die? Now, let me let me let me throw this out of here, okay? Let me just tell you this. It's very possible that I could be very distantly related to R. Kelly. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. Some of you ladies are like, oh, I can tell by how smooth your voice is. Whatever. Listen, um, I just want to throw that out there. Very, very distant possibility. Okay? Very distant possibility. Like I never took the time to look deeply into it. So I could be wrong. I never met him. I don't know the details of his life. But one thing I believe I am is 100% positively sure that R. Kelly does not know how to hog tie people. You know what I'm saying? You can tell by how he said it. He said, why would I hog tie her? I was like, I believe him. He definitely ain't hog tie that woman. Who does that? Like, this ain't Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, do you know what hog tying is? It's like when the people like when they're laying on their stomach, but their backs are tied to their head. I mean, their, their their hands are tied to their ankles or something stupid like that. And and I almost feel like you have to put like something in their mouth, like a like a like a cloth or something like that. Yeah, say. Uh, why would he? Hog, he said, "Why would I hog tie her?" <laughs> Listen, um, Russell Simmons has been hit with uh, assault charges now. I mean, not assault charges. He's been hit with assault. Uh, um, assault of a sexual nature um, Accusations Not charges, Man, accusations He's been hit with the accusations Okay, Take a listen to Now <laughs> He's been he's been hit with these accusations And take a listen to his response How he responds to this Take a listen real quick He raped me right up against the wall Excuse my language But he, that's what he did And I had to keep this secret He showed up Naked wearing a condom And tackled me to his bed while I scream. That's right. If the allegations are not true, you 
I heard someone else say this, you know, that I was quite frivolous. Look, there's a song by Houdini, I'm a hoe, you know, I'm a hoe. Three different girls after every show. Culturally, we thought that was the right way. And a number of anybody's imagination. You said and, you had more foursomes than most men have partners. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and that was, that wasn't really, that was just, I think it was cultural and silly and, and sad and, and from an insecurity that feeds it and a lot of reasons why we were that way. If you slept with as many people as I slept with, thousands. Are we talking about six people? There were like 20, right? I mean, they, oh, they I, oh, I, from oh, I spoke to Oh, you mean like, to, that's not, no. Yeah. I, I spoke poorly to, to 15 of them. I mean, 12 of them. I spoke poorly. I was crude. So how many compromising situations was I in? And if you call that person and say, can you help me help these other women? Then you can get them to tell a story and reimagine a story. And I'm not here to say, will tell you that I was in so many compromising situations that people can have a recollection from 30 or 40 years ago. And it can be different from my recollection. And it could be, if you had more foursomes than most guys had once, could someone leave and feel hurt? Could someone leave and feel they wish they hadn't? Could someone reimagine a story out of thousands of people in a market where people thirst for fame, even infamous? Could someone who just came out of jail and want to sue you because they had an experience and they can reimagine it just a little bit different, nine lie detector tests? People don't know that. Nine separate, seven from the chairman of the Polygraph Association, one for each of the serious accusations. One for the, when someone said, I've never been violent, took that. And one for I apologize. I never apologized to, about assaulting anyone. But if two people say it, because one said it and me too, and second person said it, then I took a test for it. Three hours per test by two polygraph examiners. One that I've never done this to anyone and one I've never done to each individual. Some people say that they're not accurate, but if they're 94% accurate, I did nine of them, it's pretty, I even asked if, well, what if I believe it, but it's not true? He said, your subconscious will get you. I said, I don't know how true that is, but that's what was told to me by the chairman of the Polygraph Association. He was filmed, by the way, you know, available. No one in the mainstream would cover that. Why do you think that is? There's a narrative. Which is what? That um, we, we don't want to go backwards. We want to believe with it. But women in but we don't want to not believe women. We have to believe women. We have to give them the benefit of doubt, but we can't demonize people without proof either. Twitter cannot make a decision. I've never spoken to a policeman. Listen. I've never. Listen. Um, the way he started that, I was like, uh, are you trying to, what are you trying to say, bro? Because it sounds like you ain't really trying to deny anything. Like, he wasn't playing the denial game. He was just playing the, like, yo, I don't really care. Like, like, here's what I thought. This is what I thought. Imagine if you invited a thousand people to your house, right? Would you remember every single one of those situations when you when you invited a thousand people over to your house? You wouldn't like, you know what I'm saying? For them, like for you, it's like, man, I don't know. Like I like yeah, I invited a thousand people. But imagine if a big name artist invited a thousand people to their house and you were one of the thousand. How well might you remember that situation? Could it be that your recollection of one of the wildest nights you ever had? You'll remember in a way that someone who had that kind of night every night wouldn't be able to remember. You understand what I'm saying, man? Uh, 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 are you are you are you high enough to get what I'm saying? I mean, are you low enough? Are you sober enough? Listen. At first, I was like, I don't think he's really helping his argument. But then he mentioned like um, the polygraph test, and I was like, okay, polygraph test. But they could. He said, but then I took nine of them. <laughs> he was like nine of them, and I was like, well, I think nine is pretty strong. You took nine. If somebody, if somebody said something happened and nine polygraph tests affirmed that, yeah, it happened, you would think it really happened. You see what I'm saying? And he, and he said, then it's ninety-four percent accurate. So if there's nine of the tests, then wouldn't that raise that ninety-four number? Let me let me let me take a look. Let me try to see percentages. Um, ninety-four. 
uh, times nine, right? That's 846 divided by nine. Wait, did I do that right? Who knows? It's a 94% chance. Wait, 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 wait. Let me double check that. Let me double check that. 94 times nine is 846, right? And then, um, but you got to divide it by nine, bro. Whatever. I think it's 94%. I'm not doing math right now. It's the end of the day and I'm mad. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking to somebody at work. They got me furious. I'm, they got me absolutely furious. I don't even want to think about it. Let me do my shout outs real quick. Um, shout outs usually give me, give me, give me a little bit of a jump. Uh, all right, look, 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 look. shout out to, let me see. Let me see. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. All right, look, shout out to, uh, Smith Stream. My man said, yo, um, <laughs> That lady that was that white lady that was dancing with the yellow sweater the other day in our, in our video, uh, in front of the Mossy Project, he said, "Yo, that's my boy Xavier's baby mom dancing, bro. He's a legend in the dance world at NYC. Get out of here, man, for real." He said, "Yo, they be having dance videos together, and he also had a small role in that movie Project Power." Word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's respected in the NYC dance world, so no one will touch her. Hassan Campbell though was a lame, and nobody in New York cares about him. He has no value to New York. Slipstream man, cut it out, man. Hassan Campbell got feelings, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Miss Miss Yaz said, "I'm racist." Hey, look. Uh, Peter Douglas said, "I watch all these blogs, and they be real informative. But when celebs post, then I know it's real." Hey, look, man. I appreciate you trusting me like that. You know what I'm saying? Although I be clowning too sometimes. Matt Beasy said, "Yo, celeb, celeb, celeb." He said, "I." cannot express to you how much I completely appreciate the eye and the understanding of what Christianity uh, really truly and honestly looks like when it comes to reality oh you think oh um, I appreciate that he said as opposed to what society thinks they may know or have an idea or understanding of what it really is um in other words, the flaws, the rights, the wrongs, and the shortcomings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for unconsciously knowing, um, whether knowing or not, letting and allowing your light to shine that others may see your good works. Blessings to you, my guy. You real talk, man. Y'all appreciate that, man. You know what I'm saying? See, man, people be thinking like, oh, you know, just because you want to have a relationship with God or you have an active relationship with the creator of the universe, oh, now you pushing religion down, everybody throwing all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, man, like, God is real, bro. Like, what you think God, you got God just already, like, categorized in a little tiny section of your life? man how how like how he don't permeate every single portion of your life i mean you breathing because of him you thinking because of him you know what i'm saying you moving because of him you blessed because of him you eating because of him everything is because of him so how do you like how do you designate how do you not even designate him incorporate him into every single portion of your life you know what i'm saying that's why I like like you know i do what i do over here and then you know not every single moment but i mean it just it matters to me anyway my bad um Chase Mooga said, yo, that Marcy video is mad old. <laughs> I'm like, yo, congratulations. You on the internet too much, bro. Uh, shout out to Lakia Howard. Lakila Howard, man. Shout out to you, man. You know what I'm saying? She said the family gathers around and watches um kids in uh um in Ohio. Um, watches Celeb Source in Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Um she said, Big blessings to you. The Howards from Highland Ave mess with you the long way. Yo, man, shout out to you, man. Shout out to Lakila, Trey, and Clay. You know what I'm saying? Holding it down. I love your picture. You know what I mean? Beautiful, beautiful. You know what I mean? Um uh, let's get right back to it, wrap this bad boy. I've had a couple more shout outs, but I wanted to end with that one because that was a good one right there, man. I really appreciate you, Lakila. Um, where we at over here? Uh I love, 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 love listen, 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 listen. Kanye West done made my girl Taylor Swift cry. <laughs> yay look li yay you know i like you but like p diddy said you like you're not i am i look i quote megatron the joker bill cosby puffy you know what I'm saying? i quote who i damn well please now like puff said <laughs> kanye enough is enough you see what i'm saying you ain't gonna just talk to taylor swift any old kind of way you know what i'm saying you can get on the small hats you can get on walt disney nike google Mickey Mouse, Minnie, I don't really care. I could care less. But you're going to watch your mouth when it comes to Taylor Swift. You understand what I'm saying, sir? Look, it all started with Ye interrupting Taylor Swift's acceptance speech at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards. Then, Kanye had a rhyme that referred to Taylor Swift as an itch with a B. The song was called Famous. You're like, oh, uh, was it? What's the name of it? No, 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 no. That's the name of the song. It's called Famous. Um, Ye said, quote, I feel like me and Taylor Swift might still have sex. Why? I made that itch famous. Close quote. Then, months later, the music video came out showing your girl Taylor Swift as a nude wax figure in a bed next to Ye. Now, according to Ye, 
He got permission from Taylor Swift about those lyrics in a phone call that lasted damn near an hour. But a separate source confirmed that they did talk on the phone, but Kanye never officially got permission to call Shorty a itch. He merely asked her to share the song on Twitter. So technically, now, right, there was a phone call of sorts, and Kim K released video footage of the phone call, but the joint was edited to look like Taylor Swift was approving the lyrics. Then, Kim released a video footage of the call, the edited version, which was edited and it, and, and made it seem like Taylor Swift approved of the lyrics. Okay? Uh, take a listen to the phone call. Take a listen real quick. So, my next single, I wanted you to tweet it. It's the, it's a Good Friday, it's a Dropping as a Good Friday song. So that's why I'm calling you, that I wanted you to put the song out. Okay. Like, um, what would people, I guess it would just be people would be like, why is this happening? Well, the reason why it, it would be happening is because it has a very controversial line at the beginning of the song about you. What does it say? Okay, so it says, and the song is so, so dope. And I've, I've literally sat with my wife with my whole management team, with everything, and try to rework this line. Re I've thought about this line for eight months. I've had this line, and I've tried to rework it every which way. And the, the, the original way that I thought about it is the best way, but it's the most controversial way. So it's, it's, it's going to go Eminem a little bit, so can you brace yourself for a second? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, it's a, wait a second. You sound sad. No, I don't think it's mean. Okay, then let, then let me hear it. Okay. It says, um, and the funny thing is, when I first played it and my wife uh, heard it, she was like, huh? What? That's too crazy, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, when Ninja from um, uh, D. Atwood heard it, he was like, oh my God, this is the craziest shit. This is why I love Kanye, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And now it's like my wife's favorite fucking line. I just want to give you some premise of that, right? Okay. Okay. So it says, to all my South Side niggas that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. Okay. Yeah, oh, well, this is the thing why I'm calling you because you got an army. You own a country of motherfucking two billion people, basically, that if you felt that it's funny and cool and like hip hop and felt like, you know, just the college dropout and the artists like yay that you love, then I think that people would be like way into it. And that's why I think it's super genius to to have you be the one that says, oh, I like this song a lot, like, yeah, whatever, you know, this is cool, whatever, it's like, you know, like, I got, like, shit on my album where I'm like, I bet me and Ray J will be friends if we ain't love the same bitch. Oh <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I need to think about it because I just need to, like, you know, hear some things for the first time and you just need to think about it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you don't have to do, you don't have to do the launch and tweet. That was just an extra idea I had, like, but not, you don't, if you think that that's cool, then it's cool. If not, I mean, we are launching the shit, like, on, um, just Good Fridays, on SoundCloud, on the site, shit like that. But I, um, um. Uh, you know, the thing about me is, like, um, anything that I do becomes, like, a feminist thing piece. And if I launch it, they're going to be, like, wow, like, this thing, like, they'll just turn it into something that, I think if I launch it, it's honestly, like, I think it'll be less cool, like, because I think if I launch it, it's 
it adds this le- level of criticism because having that many followers and having that many eyeballs on me right now, like people are just looking for me to do something dumb or stupid or lame and it's like almost I don't know, like I kind of feel like people would try to make it negative if it came from me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So she released some kind of like a linked uh, uh, edited version of the phone call, whatever. Okay, fans sided with Kim and Kanye. Right. Uh, And and they started doing this whole Kim exposed Taylor party, whatever. It started trending and and people started commenting snake on Taylor Swift social media. Yeah, I mean, Taylor went into hiding because of the constant bullying from uh, Kanye's fans and released her album Reputation a year later, which makes several references to the entire situation now. Taylor Swift was this week, this current week, she was named Times Person, Time Magazine's Person of the Year. <laughs> Look, why the hell they ain't named your boy Celeb Person of the Year? It's beyond me. Yeah, you know I mean. Now Taylor's taking this moment that she washes in the spotlight to address the situation with Kanye out loud. She said this. She said, "Make this is what Taylor Swift said. She said, make no mistake, my career was taken away from me." She said, you have a fully manufactured frame job in an illegally recorded phone call, which Kim Kardashian edited and then put out to say to everyone that I was a liar. Close call. Look, her tears, her tears continued to ricochet. And she added, that took me down psychologically to a place I've never been before. I moved to a foreign country. I didn't leave a rental house for a year. I was afraid to get on phone calls. I pushed away most people in my life because I didn't trust anyone anymore. I went down a really, really, I went down really, really hard. Close quote. Open the damn quote back up. She said, I thought that moment of backlash was going to define me negatively for the rest of my life. I said, God, that monster. That Kanye's a monster for that. For the rest of your life, sis? You think even when you were 76 years old, you'd still be talking about it? When you're 82, you still be talking about that that time, that phone call? Oh, Kanye West, he destroyed my life. You know what I'm saying? Look, look. Real, real talk though how, how dare he hurt the lovely Taylor Swift <laughs> Look she don't even be bothering nobody You know what I'm saying Let me ask you a real question though And I really do need your comments on this Real talk Um, I had a debate with somebody about Taylor Swift About how Taylor Swift responded You know what I'm saying How she said like it took me down psychologically To a place I moved to a foreign country I didn't leave the rental house for a year I was afraid to get on phone calls I pushed away most people When she said all of that Do you think given the situation And Taylor's response Moving to another country, not leaving a rental house for a year, not trusting him. Do you think she overreacted with a response? Like, do you think she was being super melodramatic about it? Or do you think her response was valid given the fact that it was both Kim and Kanye's fan base trolling her? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm having a debate with somebody about this. And one of us is considering the public humiliation of a woman, right? Uh, and the other is considering the possibility of her displaying the crocodile tears of a Karen when the police show up. You see what I'm saying? Like, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, is it crocodile tear type situation? Or is it like, yo, who likes public humiliation? Nobody. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Let me know what side of the debate you would fall on if you was in the conversation with us. You know what I'm saying? Which you are. Because I'm bringing you into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, look, that's an argument between two white women. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean? One of those white women had more black in her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> than you. You know what I mean? Like, Taylor spun the block a couple of times, but she ain't never stopped at a ninja house. You see what I'm saying, man? Look, she ain't never stopped on old block. <laughs> you like old block? Yeah, others. Old stand for others. <laughs> Listen, I like Taylor Swift, personally. You know what I'm saying? Her, jo- her joints is hot, real talk. Look, I pull up on you blasting my tears ricochet louder than a father mucker. Because that's my jam. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me know what you think about the debate. I don't really care if you are judging me right now. You could, Look, I don't care if you call me brave, bro. <laughs> you can call me brave all you want. I don't really care. I love you, some Taylor Swift. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I like the delicate song. My tears ricochet. The anti-hero. I'm feeling them joints. Them joints is hard. And finally... Wrap this bad boy up. Sorry, Sauce, we're sending this to you late. Um, uh, 
uh, where we at over here? I right, check this out. Check this out. Um, listen to this terrifying message, courtesy of Snoop Dogg. Take a listen. They just sent me some shit from Spotify where I got a billion streams, right? My publisher hit me. I said, break that down. How much money is that? That shit wasn't even forty-five thousand dollars. That's crazy. crazy. Yep, that's what Snoop said. Now we don't know if we could trust him, considering the I don't want to smoke anymore situation. But believing him to be true, right? Being as naive as we are, believing him to be telling the truth, a billion streams not even equating to forty-five thousand dollars is insane. Ain't that in a billion? Now. According to Visual Capitalist, let me just throw this out here, okay? It takes around 229 streams on Spotify to earn $1. You heard what I said? 229 streams approximately to earn $1. The average payout rate per stream is 0.004. In fact, if you want to know what the breakdown is for the different streaming services... It goes like this. Let me see if I can pull up the pick because I did have a pick right here. Uh, the Keyless beautiful pick, right? Okay, look. Um, streaming services. Here we go. Streaming services are Napster. I didn't even know Napster still existed. Okay. To earn a dollar, you got to have 53 streams. That's that is 0.019. Okay. Uh, um, per, per stream. Title. You'd have to have 80 streams. Uh, number of streams yeah, to earn a dollar. You'd have to have 80 streams. Hopefully, Sauce got this chart up. Okay, I'm gonna send him the chart. Apple Music, you gotta have 136 streams to earn one dollar. Google Play, you gotta have 147 streams to earn one dollar. Deezer, 156. Spotify, 229. Amazon, 249. Pandora, you gotta have 752 streams to earn one dollar. And YouTube, you gotta have 1,000. 449 streams to earn one dollar tell me that is not crazy ain't that ain't that nuts now um like here's here's the thing uh with look with numbers like those <laughs> with numbers like that i guess the real question is those of y'all that are artists would you be willing to rap like to be a rap artist knowing the reality of the situation is that a billion streams will get you 45k and you got to pay everybody else in the room that helped you make the track Yes, you know and one would have to hope everybody else is already paid because that is crazy. Yeah, you know I'm saying um, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. But did you know that uh, maybe there's something that we don't know because I don't I don't I guess it's not the same as YouTube because we don't have a billion. Yeah, hit the like button, man, because we need a dollar. You know what I'm saying? I don't got it. Like, I want a dollar. Can you hit the like button so we can get a dollar? Bro, it's, it's Christmas time. Anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, man. Um, be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source. Your source, Celeb News.